Julia. Julia. Uh, Julia has a, um, a cerebral palsy, which is a condition that uh, uh, the patient normally they're uh, they're born with. Uh, see, uh, so her her brain, uh, due to a, a problem during um, labor, uh, did not receive enough oxygen, uh, and uh, she got uh, a brain injury. Uh, uh, she was born with uh, cerebral palsy. Uh, we didn't find out till she was uh, about a year old. About a year, about a year old. Her diagnosis uh, was given to us from the doctors, and uh, we've been on a constant quest to see how we could assist her to uh, overcome this, if possible. Julia used to be not able to um, to sit, not able to walk, not able to. Um, um, uh, move from one place to the next. She couldn't, actually she could not use even the crutches before. When she was about five years of age, we found, about, found out about a program called Euromed in Poland. And uh, basically what it is, is an extensive physical therapy that's administered to children who have cerebral palsy. Uh, it's a one month session where you would actually live there for a month and they administer extensive physical therapy to the children. And uh, Julia did that five times uh, from when she was about five, six years old was her first trip. And we kept scheduling trips like every five, six months after that uh, for another month session and another month session. And each time she came home from a session, she was a little bit better with her manual dexterity and uh, able to maybe crawl a little bit that she never crawled or roll over. She couldn't roll over if she was on the floor. I was told by doctors from a very young age that I wouldn't be able to walk and I would be wheelchair bound uh, for the rest of my life. Then she started to use the crutches and walk around, go to, I mean, walk in the community in the street. And also, she was able to go up and down stairs. Uh, another thing that uh, we, uh, even standing was hard for her. Like just, just to be able to stand. We used to be like at least two people holding her to, to make her stand up. But now she can't stop normally. She could stand for a while. So this is a complete transformation. First of all, she hated therapy before. Uh, she hated therapy. She, uh, she, um, and therapist. So she, 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 she didn't like to work to work with therapists at that time. And then just suddenly, I guess she realized that um, that's. I mean, she she became more mature, and she realized that uh, therapy is good for her. And then she completely transformed. She liked her. She pushed the therapist to work harder with her instead of previously used to do the opposite. Okay. Okay, don't let go. <laughs> go. Relax. Ten point eight. Okay. Ready? You're gonna do better? <laughs> Alright, do your best. Last chance. Go. Nine point nine. <laughs> <laughs> no, one more, one more. <laughs> That's your rest, you go down. All right. Ready? Go. Good. Oh, that's 12.2. Okay. That's better. I think part of, part of the fact that I didn't give up on her is why she hasn't given up. Her family is very supportive. That's, that's all I can say. I mean, very, very supportive family. Her mother uh, used to be, um, I mean, drive her everywhere and uh, comes to every session. Her father helps all the time, her brother, sisters. They work with her at home. They try and uh, they take her everywhere. They try and every type, type of therapy. So it's a very, very supportive family. And uh, it's, it's, it's a great thing to have. My family is everything to me. I, I wouldn't be the optimist I am if it wasn't for them. I think by now she knows how much we love her. Uh, the, the, 
she's the type of person where even though she's my child you say it yourself me as a parent i could still have a, a conversation with her like if she's an adult and it's like a, a friend more so we have such a good re great relationship we talk about anything and everything <laughs> if she could wake up in the morning and put a smile on her face and move ahead yeah. you say to yourself how could you not do it she's just a, a joyful child to, to be around you know she's not a child anymore she's a young lady now you know but uh, she'll always be my girl my little girl imagine that you become dependent on on the people around you all the time and uh, forgetting that itself just forgetting um, that these difficulties and work hard on your school and laugh and, and smile and, and and be fun to everybody around you it's it's pleasant to everybody around you it's, it's a great thing and it is inspiring it make you forget all your uh, difficulties, personal difficulties, because uh, I mean, look around. I mean, uh, she has all these things, and she always smiles, she always laughs, and make jokes, and she doesn't take anything about herself personally or um, seriously. I remember one time when she was about five or six years old. Uh, I was a little emotional about you know the fact that she was uh, inflicted with this, and she looked at me and said. Uh, don't worry about my disability, you know, I'm just fine with it. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> and she was about six years old. There are times where, obviously, I get down and you think about, you know, well, what did I do to deserve this? There are times where I literally cry, like, I can't understand why I have this. And, you know, I wish it was different. I wish I could be like everybody else. There are lots of days like that. My biggest fear is being alone. Everybody, you know, wants some companion, like, you know, wants to get married, have a family. And I feel like because of my situation or like my disability, maybe it wouldn't happen. Or would they actually really wanna, you know, date me, you know, be engaged to me, marry me, have a family with me, knowing, you know, what I'm capable and incapable of doing. My wish every year when I blow out my candles is for me to be able to walk like everybody else. And I'm gonna cry.